back to the girly girl bookworm. So today I have my March possibility TBR list. Um, it feels really silly to be setting one for me to be honest because I feel like I disregarded January's and February's. So January's I think I read, let's go back, we can just look. I think I read two books out of what I said. So I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books on my TBR of possibilities. And I read two of them. Um, and then in February, I put one, two, three, four, five. Granted, the month's not over yet, but I put five and I read two of them. Um, granted, like I said, when I make these lists, I tend to make them as possibilities because my brain kind of is everywhere with what I want to read. Um, the biggest issue, like, granted, like, I've read almost 50 books already, which is insane to me, um, within the first two months. Um, but I've been so primarily focused on reading audiobooks or Kindle books because it's just the way that it's been the easiest to read. January, my mind was all consumed with, oh my god, my baby's coming soon. My baby's coming soon. My baby's coming soon. And I was super distracted and I couldn't really move and my daughter is a toddler. And so it just, Kindle books and things were my choice of reading. And then... February, I had my son, so it's been, I have my son, he needs to sleep and cuddle and feed, and my toddler is running around, and I'm recovering, and so it's been not as conducive to reading physically either, and so I'm really strapped to what's already on my Kindle, what can I get from the library, what do I not need to pay more money for, like, I'm not going to buy a book that I already own, like, as Kindle, so, like, I've been trying to balance things and it's been a little bit hard to read physically and unfortunately the books that I've been putting on my TBR are books that I can only read physically that I don't have access to digitally. So that's my my own fault. Um, I'm hoping that with March, now that we're kind of settling into a routine and we're starting to get to be kind of more normal, um, granted my husband goes back to work like the second day of March, so we'll see what ends up happening. Um, great. I think March will be a little bit better at trying to make sure that I prioritize some of my TBR. So I'm still going to make this anyways. It's still fun to kind of have that idea of like what is on my mind in terms of reading. Um, I also have been using my local library a little bit more. So I know that there are currently two books that I have on hold that just came in that I will probably be getting during March that I will try to read during March. But then again... I bought, I've been borrowing books from the library about books that I'm not sure if I like the writing style for. So, like, there's a chance that I just end up returning them without even really reading them. So I don't want to share them quite yet. Um, but these are the five that I physically own right now that I have on my brain to read soon. So in March, it's middle grade March, and that's hosted by um, Krista from um, Books and Jams and... Um, can't even say any of their names right now. There's two more hosts, um, The Curly Reader, and I want to say Life Between Words. Um, she hasn't filmed in so long that I, I feel like I'm blanking on her name. Um, but either way, it's middle grade March, and I tend to not really fully participate because I'm not a huge middle grade reader, but I do have a couple on my shelf, and one that I'm thinking about picking up soon is Shuri by Nick Stone. Um, so this one has been on my shelf for a little while and I keep saying that I want to read it and then I just don't. Um, the font is purple, so have to give it a try. Uh, I know that the second book just recently came out, um, and I just feel like it's something that is going to be interesting to me. I love Shuri as a character in the movies currently. Obviously I know that this is not going to be the same Shuri, like, to an extent. Um, but I'm excited to give it a try and see what it's like. Um, I know that I like Nick Stone's writing to begin with, so it should be quick and easy to get through. And yeah, so that's one thing that I'm thinking about reading this month. Um, I did put up a poll in February about like, what should I read next physically? And unfortunately that physical read has been taking me forever. So I haven't gotten to the other ones that were in my, um, poll, but I still want to read them. So I'm thinking that if I don't get to them at this little end strip of February, I would really like to read them in March. Um, and one is True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. I've only flipped through it a little bit, but it almost looks like it's told 
as like um I don't know how to describe it. Um because it's got like cast like a name and then a passage and then a name and then a passage. So I'm assuming it almost seems like it's like a podcast or like something. Like it's not necessarily a classically written story, which makes me excited. It reminds me of the appeal, which I really enjoyed. Um, I'm trying to think there's another story that's told like this that I really like. But there's other stories that I've really enjoyed that are similar, so I'm hoping that this one will be good as well. I think it's following a girl who leaves a party and then she's never seen again and now it's years later and there's a writer who's trying to look into the mystery and she's interviewing, so maybe that's what it is, she's interviewing all of the closest friends and people that are involved to try to unveil this case and it sounds like it could be really good, so let's hope I get to it. And then the other one was How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. Like I said, I just really wanted to get to this one in February. I thought I would get to it on Valentine's Day, and then that didn't happen. And then the farther away from Valentine's Day, the further I got from possibly reading this book, I guess. I really thought that this one was going to win that poll when I put that poll up, to be honest. Um, it did tie. Granted, I had a three-way tie. Um, so, I don't know. I think this one sounded really good. It sounds like a girl who's going to, like, try to challenge herself to be a little bit more out there and like instead of just being this closed in person that she really kind of wants to get out and she does she really wants to try like a no strings hookup and she ends up hooking up with someone and I believe that there's things that can make things complicated for this couple and then I would also really like to get to Finley Donovan not from dead because I feel like it's been so long since I read Finley Donovan is killing it and I'm kind of nervous that I'm not going to know enough going into this one I think I know enough I think I know enough but I'm scared that like the further away I get from the series the long it'll leave my brain so I want to get to this one sooner or later Finley Donovan the first book is following Finley who is down on her luck she has recently gotten divorced and she owes her husband a whole ton of money and she's trying to raise her kids then share her kids and she feels like she's failing that and she's failing at trying to come up with her second book like another book because she sells books um well, she doesn't sell books. She's a writer. <laughs> and one day she's in a Panera Bread with her agent. And she's, like, talking about the story that she has planned. And somebody mishears her and kind of thinks that she's a hitman. And, like, slips her a thing that's, like, kill my husband for 50 grand. Thanks. That's great. And then a whole mystery ensues and hijinks and all that craziness. And then it ends. But there's a final sentence and a final section that you're like, whoa, cliffhanger. And I believe that this is where this one takes place. So... I'm excited to give this one a try. Um, I love these covers. I think they're super fun. And I just, this is just a fun series. And I'm just like looking forward to getting to this one soon. And then the last possibility is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I just feel like this one just can't sit on my shelf too long. This one is about, um, it says, Meet the residents of number 12, Rue de Amas, a beautiful old apartment building in the city of light. The socialite, the nice guy, the alcoholic, the girl on the verge, the concierge. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. See you in Paris. Just sounds fantastic. I loved the guest list. The hunting party, I can kind of take or leave. But the guest list was fantastic, and I just felt like maybe it's one of those progressions where, like, the hunting party was good, the guest list is better, it's going to be fantastic. I don't know. I just have high hopes for this one. I'm scared that I'm going to like put like too much on this one and expect it to be like too good, but I'm still really excited about it. So I don't want to like overhype myself too much, but I'm pretty hyped. So hopefully this one's good as well. So those are my five possibilities. I feel like this month I really stand a chance at picking these up. January, like I said, I also picked books that were kind of like books that I didn't get to in 2021. So like if I didn't prioritize them then, it was going to be hard to prioritize them now. And then last month was kind of like backlist books again that I kind of hadn't prioritized. And I don't know why I thought I'd prioritize them now. But a lot of these are like new ones that I just got on my shelf recently. So hopefully that means that I will be more brought into this TBR. If not, you know what? It is what it is. I'm still reading. I'm still enjoying what I'm reading. Um, just not necessarily the list that I'm creating. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What are your plans for March? Do you have anything specific that you're trying to get to? Let me know down below and I will see you guys very soon. Bye everybody.